<laughs> hey, kids, it's time for another exciting episode of KW Judas. Boo! <laughs> yep.
KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for listening. We are coming at you in a way we have never attempted before. I'm Skyping it out, folks. Unfortunately, it seems like COVID has reared its ugly head yet again, making as abrupt and unwelcome of a comeback as the recent resurgence of popularity of Limp Fucking Biscuit, which I don't know why, but a lot of people lately have been talking to me like they forgot what a piece of shit fan they were and why we all just kind of seem to collectively sweep them under the rug and pretend like we never, ever bought any of their albums. Fortunately, our guest tonight is not stricken with the latter of those aforementioned and is just stuck at home with COVID. We have Mithalel. So Mithalel. it's Mithaliel. Mithaliel. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's just Michael and Elvish, I think. <laughs> Something like that. It's one of my uh, D&D characters. I never would have guessed. <laughs> you know, you got to be creative. So, Mithaliel, <laughs> I am very known for mispronouncing people's names. That's all right. That's why people come on my show. <laughs> to, to be mispronounced? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So, Mithaliel, how long have you yeah. been making this crazy music? Uh, let's see. I... I've been recording since about 1996. God damn. So what's that? Four plus 22, 20, 26 years? Yeah. Uh, you're playing most of the instruments <coughs> in the recordings that we are about to hear, correct? That one we just listened to, I did everything, but Eric Lyman played the bass on that. Okay. About what year was that? Um, I think we recorded the bass line in around 98, and then I did that. I stole the bass line from a different recording and put it into that version in uh-huh. about 2000. <laughs> so. so in essence, I mean, this is a pretty, that was a pretty old recording then. Yeah, that recording's like 20-something years old. That was some cool stuff. I've actually already... Uh, kind of had a chance to go over this guy's music, folks, and I uh, have a little bit of history. I've known him for some time, and I've also known Eric for some time. Not as long as they've known each other, of course. You guys have known each other, what, since about 95, 96? Um, yeah, since, like, my, I think it was Eric's senior year of high school, so I'm two years older than him, so yeah. So do you guys like go to school together? He went to, yeah, we met through a mutual friend. We went to high school at the same time, yeah. Word. Yeah, so I am in a band with Eric. It's a band called Waters Rising, and that's a whole different story. You guys yeah, used to be in a band too, though, right? Right. Eric and I were in a band. Um, was that? What was the name of that one? That was the Magical Fulong Chi. Fulong Chi. And we're going to be yeah. hearing some of that tonight too, aren't we? That that last song we did was a Fulong Chi song. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I dig it. And then the one at the end was also a Fulong Chi song. So, the last song we'll hear. So how you said that you uh you kind of have somewhat of an um a unique process of creating the stuff that you're putting together here. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's unique cuz I don't know what anybody else does, but <laughs> I do. I, you know, I kind of came up with my own way of doing stuff. So Just what do you by, do? You know, I, I use, uh, I use software on my computer, but I, um, <laughs> do you have a particular I, DAW that you like using? I, I love, um, I love to use for my layout. I still use acid pro. I think I'm using 6.0 still. So that's at least 25 years old. Oh, and then wow. I use like, Adobe Audition point two point oh for my like editing. Right. And I have a bunch of I have like you know a gigabyte of plugins. Word. But I got so like at one point I was so like O C D about editing that I wouldn't even like record because it would like give me panic attacks. I'm like, I can't spend that much time in there editing. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I'm a nut about having everything just exactly right. Yeah, and that's kind of what makes those sort of things a little bit intimidating to even get started at first. Yeah, when you spend like 200 hours recording a song and then you're like, oh, that's shit. And you press delete and you're like, okay, now I'm going to commit suicide. Ah, (laughs) You've done that? 
Oh, I rec- I've recorded a whole album and deleted it before. You just deleted it. <laughs> I Why deleted the whole you fucking at least thing. Hang on to it. There's like two or three songs that survived, like on MySpace that I posted, but you know, the rest of it's gone. <laughs> uh, I yeah. don't know, man. I've I've got I've definitely got some stuff that I would never put out. You know, stuff that you find a little embarrassing. Right. But just right. straight up deleting it is like, man. Yeah. There it goes. Maybe I should have put it on a floppy back. disk or something before I deleted it and buried it, you know. Yeah, I've <laughs> For got posterity a sake. Yeah. I've got a couple floppy disks. Yeah, I don't ever want to hear it again, that's for sure. <laughs> it was that bad. <laughs> that was your email. I don't phase. you know, you get you, you start experimenting and you're like, maybe this will sound good, and you're like, Nope, I was wrong. <laughs> You're like, I'm just going to start over. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to still have to look back on, though. But sometimes, yeah. it if it's that bad, then fuck that shit. Well, nobody's good at first. Yeah, exactly. I teach so, guitar lessons, and it's like, it's like, oh, I don't know if you want to keep playing the guitar, sweetie. <laughs> you might switch to the piano or watch American Idol or something. <laughs> Yeah, that's always the thing with any instrument when you first get yeah. started is having like too high of expe- expectations of yourself right? and just assuming that automatically you're going to kick ass and wondering why you don't. Right. And so when you start out like writing songs and all you know how to do is like play the piano, you don't know how to write anything. So, of course, you're going to come up with garbage unless somebody teaches you how. Right. Well, let's have another song. I think that the next one that we have on the list here is A Golden Adventure. I like this one. Is there a story behind it? Uh, me and my brother, we did the uh, Underdark uh, campaign in, in Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition, and I wrote a song about it. Uh, I like talking- Dungeons & Dragons. Are you talking about the real Dungeons and Dragons or you like Yeah, like two like second edition Dungeons and Dragons, like old school from the nineties. Oh, well yeah, you guys wouldn't have had it on computer then, fuck. No, let's yeah, we got like two hundred books. But anyways, we're D and D freaks, so sometimes I write songs about it. Motherfucking gangster shit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be ashamed, man. Hey, I'm not ashamed. I love uh, it. I have a good time. There's a lot of good bands that have based their material around fantasy stuff. Yeah. And some really good shit comes out of it. Just as we're about to hear on A Golden Adventure by Miss Lee. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Mithelial Miguel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the the unpronounceable one. I'm going to have to get better at this, folks. That's all right. <laughs> I can't just keep mutilating people's fucking names if I'm going to get famous. And, you know, if they're going to put me on KRCL, which, yes, we are still going for, we're pushing for KW Judas on KRCL. Someday it's going to happen. In fact, I'll go to krcl.org and uh, go to. Help KW Judas on KRCL and click KW Judas. All right. There is an option for it. There is. And if there's I'll go not, check that out tonight. Well, then you're going to have to start harassing them about it, folks. We want I'm going to call my Judas congressman. On KRCL. God damn it. A golden adventure here on KW Judas. Free radio Pueblo. Thank you all for listening. It's a golden adventure. In the wizard's tower Wizard's tower Tower of power Thank you.
Adventure. We have Mithiliel here on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Hey, you got it right that time. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How do you so explain I'll... the origin of the name? Something to do with Frollo's <laughs> shield or something. Yeah, his armor when he got stabbed by the troll was made out of Mithiliel or Mithril. Frollo was the evil dude from Hunchback of Notre Dame. No, that's the little hobbit dude from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You know, the furry foot guy. He had magical armor. It was made of mithril. Myth- mithril. Yeah. I thought it was mithelial. God well, damn it, make up your fucking mind. How are you going to make a name that sounds like a metal? You know, I've got to put a few extra letters on there. <laughs> sounds like a metal, a fake metal. <laughs> yeah, you want to be metal, you got to be metal. So... You were talking about making your own sort of hair metal album. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. You should, like, classify that as Mithelial. Yeah, that's going to be the first Mithelial album, yeah. The it's, Metal Man. It's its own new kind of metal. It'll yeah. be a new genre, a new subgenre. This is not metal, folks. It's Mithelial metal. Yeah, it's it's uh, some kind of weird elvish metal. Mithelial metal. Ha, yeah. ha, ha, ha. There you go. We got it. it. Mithelial metal. Yeah, if you if that winds up taking off, you can accredit me for coining that term. Mithelial yeah. metal. It's not Cleveland, but we got the new rock and roll, right? I like it. I love it. And it's going to sound just like fucking Blind Guardian. I'm sure. Epic Except for, fuck. I can't play the drums that fast. <laughs> I'll have to program them. Um, I bet I could pull something. That sounds good. I just got to teach myself how to play drums again. Night ring. Anxiety. Well, you just cut out for a sec. <laughs> All good. Maybe I'm we sorry, should go to another song. you'll be taking song. medicine at night for anxiety. Medicine. Anxiety. All right, let's listen to another song. What do we got? <laughs> now you're all talking all... Clytus is born. How about that? We got Clytus about... is born next. Clytus is born. Oh, it's a good thing you said that because I thought mm-hmm. that was pronounced differently. Yeah. This is my <laughs> favorite character from Flash Gordon. Clytus. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to say it the way that I was going to say it. I'm sure that you can uh, figure that out in your own head. This is Clytus is Born from Mithelial on KW Judas Free Radio Peruvo. <laughs> Clytus is fucking 
All right, that was Claudius is born on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Next up, we have Attack of the Pinball Machine. But before that, you were going to tell us a story. You want to hear a story? Yeah. I could, I could tell you about my love affair with Flash Gordon. Oh, God. All right, <laughs> this one sounds savory. So when I was a little kid, I loved that Flash. That's my favorite movie is Flash Gordon. Mm-hmm. And, uh there's this guy in there. He wears this gold mask. His name is Clytus. And he helps destroy the world and everything. So I liked him so much. I wanted to write a song about him. So I wrote Clytus' board. Is that even interesting at all? How romantical. <laughs> I guess I dig dudes in gold masks. I don't know. <laughs> you hear that, folks? Any dudes out there with gold masks? Yeah, Just give call. me a call. 1-800-NOT-INTERESTED. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have his phone number right here in yeah. front of me. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to scroll up. Okay, so the <laughs> next song is Attack of the Fucking Pinball Machines. All right. Is there a, a love affair uh, behind this No, one? I, I was writing this song, and I played it for uh, somebody I used to date, and... Um, Oh, so there's a real uh, love connection behind this. Yeah, she was right. in the room at the time, and I said, "What's this sound like?" And she sounds like I'm getting. She said, "It sounds like I'm getting attacked by a pinball machine." So, then I wrote the lyrics. <laughs> and that's when she confronted you about your uh, thing for guys in metal golden masks. No, then I made her sing the lyrics, and she regretted it. <laughs> so is she on this song? <laughs> yeah, she does. She sings the vocals on this song. She plays the pinball machine. <laughs> I guess you could say that. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I can't wait. This is Attack of the Pinball Machine. KW Jonas 3 Radio. Yes.
All right, we're back on the air on KW Judas, <laughs> and I've got <laughs> Mithilil here making some pretty wild claims. Yeah, I saw it on the movie straight out of Compton, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, you see something on a movie, it just makes it fucking true. All well, right, so it's better than Wikipedia. He <laughs> said the California Ravens. Raisins. Oh, that the guy. Raisins. Remember they did Raisins. that Heard It Through the Grapevine song? I thought you were saying something else. Yeah. So, so that guy who produced that song and those guys also produced NWA. Word. Yeah. Well, that's cool. It's kind of interesting. Then quote the raisin. Never quote mind. the raisins, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was lame. All right. So it's, I don't know how we recover from that one. How about another? I don't know either. Did you know Uh, a raven is one of the most intelligent animals on the planet? Yeah. You know, a raisin is one of the most dried up grapes on the planet. (laughs) And they taste like shit. (laughs) I would probably rather eat a raven. Yeah. I don't think ravens eat raisins. (laughs) Yeah, I bet raisins eat ravens, though. (laughs) I don't know about that. Maybe the psychotic, you know, killer tomato kind of raisins. Still, I have tasted raisins, and I know what they're like, and I still have yet to taste a raven. So I'm going to put that on my things to do list. Capture my, my... a raven with uh, breadcrumbs and a T-shirt. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's like an ill omen or something. If you eat a raven, you probably like don't go to Mahala or something. I Odin, have... Odin's like, you're out, dude. <laughs> And Bob Odenkirk, he can't keep me out of Valhalla, and I wasn't planning on going anyway. What are we even fucking talking about? <laughs> Rock and roll lasers. Rock and roll laser. Hell yeah! So What's I used the, a, uh, I used a lyric creation program for this song. A what? So I, I typed in um. I wanted to, I typed in a song lyric and I and it's, it said, come up with a title for your song. So I'm like, okay, I need a song title. And I used a song title generator. That's what it's called. <laughs> and so it said rock and roll laser. I'm like, that's a good one. So then I just kept generating phrases until I came up with a whole song. Wow. So this was that's what, partially artificially intelligence. The, all the lyrics artificial are artificially intelligence that yep. generated this. Yeah. All the lyrics are artificially generated. That's amazing. <laughs> I've seen a couple of videos of shit like that. Yeah. So, do you actually have the lyrics written down somewhere? Yeah, I got a file of lyrics on my hard drive. Cause that would be interesting to read. <laughs> so yeah, they. I mean, I didn't use all the phrases that came up with it. I just used the ones that made sense, you know. But <laughs> so, when was this that you produced this song? Mm, this has been in the last ten years. I think it was right around, like, uh, 2015. All right. We're just going to say you're the first one to do it. Yeah. All right, folks. The first ever artificially generated lyrics in a song. This is Rock and Roll Laser by Mithiliel on KW Judas Free Radio Provo.
That was Rock and Roll Laser here on KW Judas Free Radio Bravo. Thank you all for hanging with the Myth Man, Mythalel, Mythal, Mythalelio on KW oh, Judas yeah. Free Radio Provo. I like the explosion. That was the best part. Yeah, yeah. And when we edit it, it's going to be way fucking bigger and way fucking louder. That, you think that was good? Yeah, just wait. Wait till the edit. <laughs> Right. There's gonna be real fucking lasers and real fucking birds and real golden adventures. I want to hear eagle farting. You're gonna have eagle farts, but days. <laughs> wow. So anyway, what needs to happen? Like I was saying, is Blizzard needs to come up with some kind of cryptocurrency or whatever the fuck. And they need to team up with whoever's doing the VR. Um, oh, yeah. You know, the you know, all these guys get together. You know, you I see these like kids one playing this. reality versus another one. Seeing these kids playing this game, that Fortnite now, and they're spending freaking $80 a week playing that game. Beyond the subscription just to buy, like, special outfits and shit and i'm like well you get hell special no. outfits how does it how do, okay you got to explain this game to me i have i've never played it i've just seen people playing it and it's it's weird as fuck is it and a there's virtual like virtual reality yeah it's like a mmor pbg or whatever where you can Holy have like tons of people from all over the world and they they all get in there and they try to kill each other or something but you pay extra money if you want to look like your favorite dude like you can look like the rock or darth vader or whatever you want <laughs> but you pay like you pay oh, so tons of money for that actually, shit. Not it's not cheap, dude. <laughs> wearing the costume. No, you actually look. You know, you're like the cartoon character or the video game character or whatever. Your you know, character is wearing the costume. Yeah, but you pay. You have to pay like eighty bucks if you want to be Darth Vader. How many? On top of whatever Darth... else you have to pay. Yeah, but how many Darth Vaders are going to be out there, man? Yeah, well, whoever wants to be Darth Vader and has eighty bucks, got it. You know. Well, that's no fun. I don't want to play anymore. Pa. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm going to be into all that. I don't have a thousand dollars a month for a video game. I don't have a thousand dollars a month for anything. No shit. I don't Barely have a thousand dollars a month for rent. That's <laughs> what I was just going to say. Who can afford it? <laughs> I definitely got a thousand bucks a month for gas. No <laughs> fucking problem. I was looking at my car today. I'm like, I got a full tank. I'm a rich man. I ain't gonna <laughs> gonna complain. See, yeah. I just got my first car like a year ago, so I'm still kind of new to this, and so I have to look at the glass full. In that, I'm just like, oh, I thought gas was always this expensive. What? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, maybe it went up a dollar or so in the last year. I don't know what it was like back when it was what three bucks or under. Fuck. Yeah, I was driving Uber Eats for a long time, and uh. Fuck like doing gas that now. I can't, you know, you go out and drive and you make like five bucks an hour because gas is so much. I'm like, nope, not tonight. <laughs> right. Yeah, find something else to do. Yeah, well, try taking a trip back from Escalante to Utah County and um, not knowing where the hell you're going without a GPS. <laughs> how much did that cost you? About 300 bucks. Fuck. Yeah, I went too far east until I realized I was in, like, fucking Emory County, almost to fucking, Den like, on my way to Denver, not almost to Denver. I see the first sign. It's another couple hundred miles. So I turn the fuck around, and right when I turn around, there's a fucking blizzard, and my gas Whoa. light goes on. <laughs> uh, so wonderful. luckily, I still have a can of gas, so I come out, I get out of my car, and I start filling up the fucking tank in the blizzard. A sheriff pulls up. He at least tells me that I'm on the right path and tells me how, where to go. I guess I had got to go back to this shit-ass town called Salina. No offense to anybody in Salina. Salina, you know how I pronounce things. I've driven past there. I don't know anyone from there, though. So if you're from there, you know, I'm pretty sure it sucks. If you are from there, then you're probably <laughs> sitting here thinking, wow, this guy's an idiot. How do you fucking No, get they're, like, they're like, yeah, turn. it sucks here. I want to get the hell out. <laughs> Please open the bars. If it, if it helps, I got lost a second time. Once I got back to Salina, trying to get from there to Scipio, <laughs> I wound up you heard just having people. a guess. 
If you're lost, you're in Salina. <laughs> if you're in Salina, you're lost. <laughs> yeah, and never coming back. <laughs> Until you get to Scipio, then you're really fucking lost. No. Oh, I know someone from Scipio. Now, Scipio is at least on I-15. So then I get to I-15, and I think, ah, oh, I'm finally on a fucking street that I know. Hell yeah. This is finally over. I'm going to start heading to familiar territory. And I don't know what was up with the fucking signs or what was up with my brain, but it said Las Vegas left, and it said Salt Lake left. So I went left. Where and I start driving for a good while, and I start thinking to myself, I'm like, you know. How can they both Salt be left? Lake, and yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Vegas and Salt Lake are not in the same direction. That sign didn't make any. Uh, Unless you're in Arizona, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I next sign I see is for fucking Fillmore. Whoa. Yeah, dude. And again, if you are from anywhere down here. I ain't trying to talk shit on your town, but you know how fucking lost I am at this point. You, you like, you, yeah. If you are, if you're familiar with this area at all, you, you, like I went from Escalante all the way around the West Way, so past Penguin and uh, past Fish Lake, and then as when you were supposed to go north at Salina, I keep going east, heading to Denver. Turn. Are back you still around. on the same? Are you still on the same can of gas, or did you fill up? Oh point, no, right? I don't even know how many times I filled up. And what got me off on this whole thing is just how goddamn expensive fucking gas is right now. Yeah, like, where did you stop and take out a loan? <laughs> right? I don't even know how I had the money to, to Dude, cover this. I know you robbed home. a subway in the middle of the night. You're like, give me all the cash. I need no, gas. they were closed. <laughs> I, I, couldn't even, I didn't even have that option. I couldn't even, like, rob a homeless guy uh, sitting on the side of the subway. No, no. No homeless You're guys screwed. out. Homeless you run out of money, money out there, anyway. you're screwed, man. You're sleeping in the blizzard in your car. Yep. And that's when the homeless guy robbed me. I was like, ah, yeah, shit, out of luck. Like, I'll give you a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wound up cuddling with the old Oscar. Let him into my car. Gave him a Oscar beans. the Grouch? No, that was his name. Yeah, you're like... Not <coughs> gave him some chapstick and said, just Keep because quiet. his name is Oscar <laughs> and he lives in a trash can, it does not make him a grouch. Now, you know, I always friends. liked him, at least he wasn't addicted to cookies, you know. Actually, to be honest, <laughs> as a kid, he was kind of my favorite Muppet. Yeah, I always liked the grouchy one. Go figure, you know, Care Bears, Grumpy Bear was the you know, you like Ninja Grumpy Turtles, Bear? I like Raphael because he was the asshole, you know. And now, look at me. Become the nice guy that I am. All fucking makes sense, you know? Oh, hey, I got a question. I might so have I've been trying answer. to come up with my uh, shred guitar name, and I got three choices. So I, I, we Speaking need to take a Ninja vote or Turtles. something. Yeah, Shredder, right. We so need it's to either going to be a Shredder. Shredder Allen Poe. Shredder Allen Poe. Right? Wow. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go. What's the next one? Okay. Shreddy Shreddenstein mm. or the Shreddinator. Shredger Allen Poe. For it's sure. It's a good one, right? Yeah, that one get yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, that'll be my Shredmaster name then. I mean that, that one gets my vote. If anybody wants to drop a vote, feel free to leave a comment in the description of this YouTube video or wherever it is that you are listening to this podcast. Call me on that phone number I made up. Yes. The <laughs> five 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 Four one seven. You can suck it. <laughs> so the next song here we have in line is Starbird. Starbird. This is from that uh, Star Wars cartoon. Remember that one, uh, Rebel Star Wars Rebels? I think it was. And they had a spaceship out? named Starbird. A Star Wars cartoon, like from way back when, or is this new? No, recently. A new. No, I don't know about. It. Yeah. Sorry. I, Anyways, the only new cartoons a... I'm familiar with is like Rick and Morty. Oh yeah. Well, I'm a Star Wars <laughs> fan too. So Rick and Morty's I want close. To... Yeah, isn't that based on Back to the Future? Somebody sort was saying of. it was kind of based on Back to the Future. Kind I think of. it was Uncle Bud who was telling me it was based on Back to the Future. 
Uh, how do I put it? it I, it's like if Doc was way more of a drug addict. And <laughs> um, I don't know. Marty McFly master was in high school. Yeah. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> It's a show about infinite possibilities, man. And that's why I like that show. Is because some episodes, you don't even know if you're watching the same Rick or the same Morty as in other episodes. In fact, there are some episodes where you know you're not watching the same Rick and the same Morty. They're in a different fucking dimension. And it's very clear that it's not the same that you've been watching because you see them later. And yeah, it's all sorts of in and out, up and down craziness anyways we're not talking about rick and morty we're talking about nerdy star wars shit yeah so i wrote this about stealing a starship and flying it through a black hole which i'm sure you've done more than once in my mind right in your mind starbird here on kw judas free radio pro thank you all for listening We are back on the air with Nathaniel, and he's going to do some mad freestyle flow. You want me to beatbox for you? He's, it, yeah, if that counts as mad freestyle flow, All right. then let's have some beatboxing. There you go. Man, I was... I was about to bust a flow over that. <coughs> Want me to go back to it? No, no, you're not getting it now. <laughs> Killed the mood. Sorry about that. It's all good. <coughs> it was making me cough. I uh, I hold back on my MC skills because I don't want to embarrass anybody, you know? Yeah. You don't want to be, be too... in a hip-hop group, you know? Like really? What was it called? The PPW. PPW, pretty pink. The pi- <laughs> well, where was that going? <laughs> I, I couldn't come up with the, the W. Pretty I'm pink sorry. W. <laughs> pretty pink wax machine. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was the flaming psycho ward. Flaming psycho lord. Ward. 
Ward. War, uh, war, like W Ward, and we spelled the flame oh. with a P H. Le- oh, so like uh, <laughs> like the psycho war. <laughs> the play- yeah, it was pretty awesome. It actually you started don't... out as the floating psycho ward, which was a reference to Muppet Treasure Island. Yep, gangster. I did a I did a uh, concert once, and it was titled "Funky Fat Fresh," and they were all peas. P P P. Yeah. That's back when uh, Valor was called the station. The state, oh damn, that was for days ago. Yeah. Remember when it was the Rap City? That's that's yeah. when I came into the scene. So right. that was even before Rap City. Yeah, they they still charge just to play. <laughs> you got cha- ah, what is every it? time? Just- <sighs> every time. <laughs> I'm not gonna get started. Anybody that knows, they know. They know. Yeah. So it, it is tough to keep an all ages venue um, alive, though, especially in a location like that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's an like, expensive I've always, slot, I'm sure. I've always had that, like, as a dream, like in the background, like, it'd be so cool to own my own venue. Uh-huh. But they don't make any money. <laughs> it's, it's tough. I've done it. Yeah. I wasn't so. the owner of the venue, but I was pretty much in charge of the whole thing. The owner of the venue. Well, they kind of switched owners a couple times, and due to different reasons, were not able to be much part of it during a lot of that business's existence. And so I was kind of on my own through a lot of it. And I kept it alive, mostly with the shows, and I tried, I paid bands what I could, when I could. Um, but an all-ages place... Especially, yeah. we at least had a coffee shop and a smoke shop that at least generated a little bit more income than just what's made at the door, right? You're not you're not going to make money unless you're serving liquor. That's the bottom line. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's sad but true. You don't yeah. make much money off coffee or cigarettes, and you know that's what yeah. it was was a smoke shop and a coffee shop. And honestly, a coffee shop is another thing that's tough to keep open around here. Especially, you know, if you're not right. juicing Java, you're not going to make it over like five years. If you're lucky, we made it two years, and we had all three in one. We only had a two-year lease. We we might have, we probably would have stayed open longer, but we thought the lease was up, and the place was getting bulldozed when the lease was up, so we had no chance of renewing it. But we threw a big party that trashed the place so badly that the owners of the building were able to write it off as a riot. Oh, wow. And somehow their insurance covered it. And Whoa. nobody really got in trouble. So, <laughs> But it didn't get bulldozed. FYI, I was the not there, people. Up. I was not involved in the riot. <laughs> Neither was I. I just heard about it. I, I, I had cancer that week. <laughs> I knew that it happened, and I caught the same cancer. I got better. It was the it was the quick passing kind of, right, right, the kind of like you know, you just yeah. kind of wake up and like oh my cancer it's gone now, right now that all of that's fucking I don't have to deal with that shit. So the next song, the horrifying sound of the soul sucker, right. I don't even know if I want to hear the story behind this one. So it, this is really funny if you want to hear the story. So I wrote this song about my ex-wife before she was my ex-wife, and then I had her <laughs> sing it. <laughs> okay. She didn't know what it was about, so it was really funny to me and not to her. Which I kind of guess is a dick move now that I think about it, but I like the song. You wrote this while you were still together? <laughs> well, I was on my way out. Uh... <laughs> And you still called it that? What? It's the horrifying sound of the soul sucker. There it is. All right. All right. Let's hear it, folks. <laughs> Mathilio on KW Judas Free Radio Pro. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
purifying sound of the soul sucker here on KW Judas. We're going to go right into the next song. This is Hip Hop of the Cobra Khan. Is there any quick story behind this one? Uh, all the uh, lyrics are generated by the computer except for the chorus. Oh, shit. Another so, one of those artificially generated. No, no. The computer sung this one. Oh, really? It sung? Yeah. I had to, I had to spell all the words phonetically. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Damn. You are making robot music. Yeah. I love it. That's amazing. All right. So this is Hip Hop of the Cobra Khan, and all the vocals you're hearing is all computer generated. Unlike the except last the one chorus. I heard. Yeah. Except the chorus. Is that you? I sung the chorus, yeah. Right, right. Okay. Hip Hop of the Cobra Khan. KW Judas, Free Radio Provo. Kid, are you tired of those queasty old grandma galoshes? Oh my gosh, my galoshes are new from Oshkosh Pagosh. No more, kid. Your troubles are over. But I didn't have any trouble. Oh, ho, ho. but you have. Fear no more, my clearly distraught young friend. We've got you covered with Derpenchley's new rattlesnake galoshes. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, hey. Oh, uh, wait, Derpenchley guy. Mm-hmm. This one has a rattlesnake attached to it. That's right. The rubber membrane serves perfectly for milking the venom. Just stick your foot right in there. In about a minute, your foot will feel all cool and tingly. Oh, hey, wow, Derpenchley guy. That actually feels really swell. <sighs> Aha, my boy, swell indeed they shall. Brought to you by Derpenschlee. And remember, if it doesn't say Derpen, it's not Derpenschlee. Dumb don't give a fuck about your gloss. Shut the fuck up, kid. Who the fuck are you? All right, so that was a word from our sponsor, Derp and Schlee, without whom this program would not be possible. Thank you, Derp and Schlee. I got to get me some of those rattlesnake galoshes, man. Those sound pretty dope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dr. I wonder if Schultz. they come with, you know, the Nike airbags on the bottom. I'm pretty sure that's, that's at least what it feels like, at yeah. least for a second. <laughs> Until your feet swell up. <laughs> I don't know if the swelling occurs if it's only applied externally. I mean, I I saw a dog that got bit in the head by a rattlesnake once, and his head swelled up to like five times the normal size. It was huge. He couldn't even get up. He was just laying on the ground for like days. Jesus, what did you do? Was oh, it your lived. dog? My uncle's dog. Did it die? What no, he lived. What do you do to that? <laughs> well, you know, you look at it and you think about shooting it, and you think about how much you like it. Try to get some snake venom. 
<laughs> That's why you just keep around that there snake venom antidote, or less. And then you're like, I wonder if it's going to live. <laughs> so did he or not? Yeah, he lived through three three rattlesnake bites. Jesus. He was a, he was a Mexican hairless, Harry the Mexican hairless. Three rattlesnake bites in a row or on different with, occasions? Within his lifetime. Gangsta. Wow. Yep. He needs some of them galoshes, Arliss. <laughs> yeah, he could get that shit for you. He's like, ah, it's biting me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're in business. The dog's still alive now? No, nah, that was like oh. when I was in high school, before I was in high school. Too many rattlesnakes. Yep. Well... This next song is dedicated in loving memory to um, Harry the Hairless Wonder Dog. The Mexican hairless dog, yeah. He didn't have any hair. God rest his hairless soul. He's probably buried out there somewhere in Arizona. Well, the name of this song is The Hobo Lords. So how do we... uh, this, I actually Connect got the that. idea for this song from, uh, did you ever watch that uh, TV show, The Flight of the Concords? I heard of it. Yeah. Well, there's this one time where one of the guys in the show joins a gang, and the gang is called the Hobo Lords. And so I thought that was a cool name, so I wrote a song about it. Ah. Interesting. This, and this song, song's about the Hobo Lords having a fight with a bunch of unicorns and some dragons, I think. Dedicated to the hairless wonder dog. <laughs> yeah, Harry the hairless. <laughs> hey, A-W-T. you know you can't come up with this stuff. <laughs> no, I don't think you're making it up. Trust me. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> Okay, so we got time for one last song. What one do you want to end it with there, Arliss? Uh, I think we're going to go with Love at the end, right? That sounds about appropriate. This is a so song this called one Love. is a, a Fulong Chi song, and uh, my friend Johnny Schroppel is playing bass, and Matt Tyler is playing bass on the chorus, and then Tammy Schroppel sings all the lyrics on this one. Except for in the chorus, I think John's singing back up. Shout outs to John and Tammy. Those guys are also in my other band, Waters Rising. I just thought I would mention. So You guys aren't practicing that, tonight though, right? Uh no. We've got a bit of a schedule shift this week. But it's I just think it's funny that I know them through a completely different way than I know you. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? And same thing with Uncle Bud, who has also been on this show on the uh, night we had ritual over so yeah, yeah uh, it's funny I listened that, like, to that show <laughs> it was a good one 
but you guys yeah. all know each other from different ways, and I know all of you from different ways. You know, uh, yeah. funny little network of Inter- people. We interesting got here. fact about Uncle Bud and I. You know where the Smiths is at there in Provo? Oh yeah. We one time we one time sat in a car in that parking lot for three days. <laughs> Why? Because you know we were unhealthy. Back in the day. <laughs> Okay, we're going to leave it at that. This song is called Love here on KW Judas. <laughs> this goes out Radio to Provo. those three lonely nights <laughs> at the Smith's parking lot back in 98 was. Yeah, I think that's about right, yeah. KW Judas, Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for listening.
We'd like to thank you for joining us on yet another exciting episode of KW Judith on Free Radio Provo. We now return you to our regular Free Radio 